Okay, here's the question. A car brakes with a constant deceleration of 40 feet per second squared, producing skid marks measuring 200 feet long and coming before coming to a stop. How fast was the car traveling when the brakes were first applied? Okay, well this is a calculus question, and so for the sake of the problem, we're going to be rather thorough about the calculus. But first of all, let's start with what we've got. We know that this car is decelerating, so it's got an acceleration of negative 40 feet per second squared. The, the initial position of the car, we'll just say that's equal to zero feet. The final position of the car, once it comes to rest, is going to be equal to 200 feet. The, the initial time, the time at which the brakes are first applied, we can similarly call that zero seconds. And the, the final time, we're not quite sure about that yet, but we're going to be able to calculate that. And similarly, we don't know what the initial speed of the car is, but we do know that the final speed of the car is going to be equal to zero feet per second. So that's what we know. So let's take a look at this from a calculus standpoint, particularly in terms of, of integration. I can leave that up there. Okay, so we know that the acceleration is going to be constant, which will be nice. And what we know is the, the first integral of acceleration with respect to time is equal to our change in speed right there so if we do this calculation so actually what we get here is our final speed is equal to our initial speed plus the integral of acceleration with respect to time and this just becomes v1 plus and since a is a constant this integral is actually pretty easy this just becomes a times t2 minus t1. And so this is our first real equation right here uh, the for the first integral of acceleration. And what we already know is we've got some simplifications here. We know that the final speed is equal to zero and the initial time is equal to zero. So what we can say is v1 plus a t2 is equal to, to v2, which is actually just equal to zero. And what I'll say right now is that we can, and we'll, this will become a little clearer in the next step, is that we can solve for t2 here. And t2 is going to equal negative v1 over a. Now if we take this first equation and then we take the integral again, we're going to say that uh, we'll get displacement. That displacement is going to equal the integral of this thing right here. Or specifically, if we said v2 is equal to v1 plus the integral of a, we're going to look at the integral of this entire equation right here. So that the displacement is going to equal the integral from t1 to t2 of v1 plus the integral from t1 to t2 of a dt dt. And what we can do is we can distribute out that integral. And so this becomes the integral from t1 to t2 of v1 dt plus the double integral from t1 to t2 of a dt, oh, excuse me, dt squared. Well, we've already done a calculation of the integral of a constant, and v1 is a constant. So we can say x2 minus x1 is equal to, this term becomes simply v1 times t2 minus t1. And the double integral of a constant is equal to 1 half, excuse me, this should be a plus right here, 1 half a t squared. Uh, evaluated from t1 to t2. So that this whole thing becomes x2 equals, I'm going to 
take this x1 over to the other side. x1 plus v1 times the quantity t2 minus t1 plus 1 half a times the quantity t2 squared minus t1 squared. And again, remember we've got our simplification. Specifically, x1 is equal to 0 and t1 is equal to 0. So if we plug that in down here, we're going to get uh, x2 is equal to, and this is just for this case, x1 is equal to 0. So we get v1 times t2. And then over here we get plus 1 half a t2 squared. Now remember from equation 1 we made a, uh, we solved for t2. t2 was equal to negative v1 over a. So if we make that substitution down here, we're going to get x2 is equal to v1 times negative v1 over a. And this is plus 1 half a negative v1 over a squared. So that this becomes this becomes negative v1 over squared over a, and this becomes v1 squared over a squared times a times 1 half. So this simplifies to negative v1 squared over a plus 1 half times v1 squared over a. And so this is just equal to negative 1 half v1 squared over a. And so now what we can do is solve for v1 and we get v1 is equal to the square root of negative 2 times a times x2 which is equal to the square root of negative 2 times remember negative 40 is the acceleration and then x2 is 200. And this is uh, 80 times 200, so that gives us the square root of 16,000, which is also equal to 40 times root 10, which is about equal to, what did I say, 126.5.